This might just spare you a little bit of pain, mom and dad, if you have or are soon going to have, cue the violins, a teenager. How many stand-up routines have covered this subject? The sullen teenager. The fights, the wars, the attitudes. Does it have to be that way? I don't think so. It's not easy, but you do not have to experience a teenage nightmare. The most difficult chapter of this here new book, Reset for Parents, How to Keep Your Kid from Backsliding, available at Wretched.tv, was chapter 18. This was the only chapter that wasn't, like, Theology. Now you apply it. This was getting really close to pretty typical sort of parenting books. This is what you need to do. However, this is not intended to be a uh, do it like this, then do this and do that. That is that is way out of my my scope to tell you how to do everything in your home. Not a chance, but this is an encouragement theologically to let your children try out their faith. That's right. Just like a teenager who gets a permit and you <laughs> have to let them try to drive, so too it is with the Christian faith. Mom and Dad, you and I need to be willing to let the little birds try to fly to see how strong their wings are. If we don't do that, I guarantee you that they will one day leave your home. They'll fly off to the university and get ready for a thunderous crash. How do we avoid that? I think a helpful piece of advice is don't cling too tightly and don't hold on too loosely either. Let's tackle first things first, the Klingon parent from Reset for Parents. Parents who try to protect their children have typically been called helicopter parents. Recently, pundits have relabeled these folks lawnmower parents. Not only do we hover over our kids, we get in front of them, mow down every obstacle so they can live a stress-free life. Does that describe you? Look, you're, you're a Christian mom and dad, and you do not want your child to take a nasty tumble. You don't want your kid to be pumped with all kinds of adult information. I get that, but is it possible that you have become a helicopter or lawnmower parent? Uh oh. From Reset for Parents. When a child goes from youth to young adult, both parent and child need to make some adjustments. They want to be treated like adults, but they're not there yet. They don't want to submit like a child, but you still want to have the final word. That dance has led to countless toes getting stepped on. Me thinks this is the reason there are so many quarrels during the teenage years. You want to protect your child from taking a major header. You don't want their heads being filled with too much adult information. And in the meantime, they're trying to grow up and cast off those parental shackles. And that's where the tension grows until it finally blows. What should we do? How do we make our way through these choppy waters without being capsized. I think there are two principles, concepts, that you're going to have to try to figure out how to hold intention. I, nobody can tell you precisely how to do that, but do that, we must. Here's the first principle. Children on the verge of adulthood must continue to honor and submit to mom and dad. The second principle, parents need to loosen the reins and be willing to let their children goof up. Kind of soften this so you don't panic immediately. You need to be willing to let your child... S <clears throat> yeah, you need to be willing to let your child... S sin. Ugh. Those are the two principles that must be held in tension. Young people, submit, 
Honor your mother and father. They know more than you do. God has placed them in authority over you, and your role is to submit to them even when you perhaps don't like their parental decisions. Now, having said that, mom and dad, progressively you need to let the little birds fly from Reset for Parents. If you refuse to let them make bad decisions, you will not be preparing them for adulthood. Not only that, you won't be testing their faith to see what they've got or haven't got. Have you ever let your child just biff it? Have you ever let your child who's a teenager sin the way that God lets you and me sin? You should not let your teenager go to the kegger, but we do need to be willing to let our children try out their morality wings by making decisions we disagree with. Oh, I know what you're thinking. What kind of decisions are we talking about? First of all, don't let your kid commit a lollapalooza. You don't want your child to have a lifetime of regrets. Instead, we protect them from those big, bad, ugly things, and we let the rope out. We give them just a little bit more leash to try out and test their faith. Here are some samples of that. Dad, can I buy this overpriced cell phone? Well, hey, that's your call. <laughs> See what I did there? That's your call. <laughs> the cell phone. You say, whoa, 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 that's not a good investment. They're going to spend all their lawnmower money doing that. Yep. Yes, they are. Another scenario. Mom, can I buy this overpriced Justin Bieber t-shirt? Answer, if you think that's a wise purchase. Dad, can I go to an R-rated movie with my friends? Answer, if you think that honors the Lord. Then have fun, son. Mom, can I stay up late even though I have to be up for school in the morning? Answer, if you think that's wise. And finally, Dad, can I go to the game instead of studying for my final? Answer, up to you, a young man, young lady. There are a gazillion more scenarios. I am encouraging you, not telling you, not giving you the exact how-to list, but progressively as they age and grow in maturity, sometimes you need to let a kid biff it. Cue the MIDI, please. We are in the middle of our Rescue the Perishing campaign, inviting you to join us in seeking and saving that which is lost. Perhaps this hymn, Hark the Voice of Jesus Crying, perhaps points at you. Verse 3, if you cannot be a watchman, standing high on Zion's wall, pointing out the path to heaven, offering peace and life to all. Does that sound like you? You can't go. You maybe aren't ready yet to start witnessing one-on-one -on -one to people. What can you do to rescue the perishing? Um, with your prayers and with your bounties, that's old hymnal language for money. With your prayers and with your bounties, you can do what God demands you can be like faithful Aaron, holding up the prophet's hands. Will you join us and help us rescue the perishing?